Hi guys. So in the previous lecture we talked about stochastic differential equations and that time we said that the stochastic differential equation takes the form of dx of t is equal to beta t x t dt plus gamma t x of t dw of t right where d where w of t basically was a round in motion we are also given an initial condition of x t is equal to small x so the value of the process at time t is equal to x this is basically our initial condition and let's assume that we have capital t is greater than small t and in order to basically solve the differential equation what it means to solve is we need to find out the process x of t such that it solves this differential equation with this initial condition okay so we basically are looking for x of capital t such that it basically satisfies this differential equation and satisfies this initial condition and the way we can do that is we can integrate um, this differential equation from small t to capital t and we'll get dx of u is equal to integral small t to capital t beta u x of u du plus integral t to t gamma u x u dw u right so left hand side would then become x of capital t minus x of small t and on the right hand side we'll get these two integrals okay now x of small t we've already said is the initial condition and is equal to x then x of capital t basically becomes x plus integral beta of u x u du plus integral t to t gamma u x u dw u. This basically is our Ito's integral, this is the Lebesgue integral, this is the initial condition. Okay, so this is how we can actually solve for x of t, capital T. And this basically is the solution of that differential equation that takes the initial value equals to x so one thing to actually remember here is x of t, this x basically is the initial condition at time t so this is basically ft measurable and this integral basically depends on the parts of the brownian motion between time small t to capital t okay it doesn't depend on parts of the brownian motion before time t because we are given this initial condition okay and just remember that parts of the Brownian motion between small t and capital T are independent of information available at time t okay or the increment is basically independent of um, the information available to us at time t okay that basically is the feature of a Brownian motion right so just something to keep in mind and we'll uh, get to that a little later when we are talking about the Markov property of xt okay so just something to keep in mind now what we want to do is let's assume that we are given a Borel measurable uh, function h okay and we are required to find out expectation of function of x of t okay where remember x of t basically was the solution of this differential equation with this initial condition okay and in order to signify that we basically are using this um, initial condition we write superscript t comma x so this basically says that we want to take expectation of a function of x of t where x of t is the solution of that differential equation with the initial condition that at time t x of t takes a value x okay so we basic this is what this notation actually signifies now one way to actually calculate this expectation is we could use um, Euler's method. So let's assume that we have time here and we have the value of x here and this is time small t, this is time capital T. And at time small t we are given some initial value x, right? And we could use Euler's method to simulate the stochastic differential equation okay with this initial condition so we can start from here and this is t so we can start from this initial condition and we can simulate using Euler's method 
a path of our process and at the end of simulation we will get a value of x of t right and once we get the value of x of t we can easily calculate the value of the function right so that's easy so this is basically one realization of our simulation using Euler's method we can then again do another simulation we will get a different value of x of t and likewise we can keep doing many such simulations and we will get different values of x of t and for each value of x of t we could get the value of this function right and in order to basically then calculate the expected value of the function of this um, this, um, this random process we can then just take the average value okay and that average value would basically give us this expectation okay and the way we can actually do use Euler's method so we could just say that x t plus delta is nothing but x which is the initial condition plus the change given by this differential equation right so the change is going to be beta times t comma x of t is basically our initial value x multiplied by dt here we basically are uh, you know moving time by a very small increment delta right so this basically is going to be multiplied by delta plus we have gamma t x and then in order to simulate this uh, um, dw of t we basically can do square root of delta and then we have a standard normal random variable right here so a realization of a standard normal random variable okay and this basically we are multiplying it by square root of delta because you know that basically changes in um, uh, the increments of Brownian motion basically accumulates variance at one per unit time right so that basically is why we need to multiply it by square root of delta okay so this would basically give us the value of x at t plus delta similarly if you want to do t plus 2 delta then this would be given by x of t plus delta plus beta of t plus delta x of t plus delta delta plus gamma of t plus delta x of t plus delta again square root of delta and we basically going to have another realization of a standard normal random variable and we can keep doing this and if we keep doing this finally we will get x of t um, and here the assumption is t minus t by delta basically is an integer okay so we are choosing this increment such that t minus t by delta is an integer hence we when we keep doing this we'll finally arrive at one realization of xt okay we'll get one path likewise we can then do another set of simulation we'll get the second path third path and so on and once we take all of these paths, we take the value of the function of those uh, terminal values and we take the average, we'll get our expectation, okay? So something to keep in mind is if this x was basically somewhere here, okay, at time, some other time very close to our um, capital T, then this expectation would, would change, right? Here basically the x was here at time t and if we choose another time t star which is very close to t and we start a simulation with this initial condition this expectation this terminal values would change because it would basically then go from here and you know we need to worry about the variance of our uh, Brownian motion it will the parts of the Brownian motion will basically change depending on what our starting position is right so in in other words this basically depends on it's a function of both time and the initial value okay so if you were to start instead of here if you were to start here we would get a different value of this expectation so this expectation is basically a function of time and the initial value so that's what i've written here okay so something to keep in mind okay so now let's try to compute the conditional expectation.